Okay, recording. So here's the FreeCAD session with Yorick, a core FreeCAD developer. We're talking about the open source ecologies greenhouse for aquaponics. We're doing actual module based design with arch full architectural detail using FreeCAD. Welcome to the show. And let's have a just brief walk through with Yorick. So tell me about what's the progress to date and some maybe like a overview some of the features you're using within uh, FreeCAD and tell us what you have here. Uh, basically, uh, at the moment, I start modeling these components for, for the panel. We are modeling a roof panel, just one unit. These panels will be just mm -hmm. placed one next to the other to, to form the complete roof. Mm -hmm. And just for, so just for reference, I mean, you, you modeled that all, you, you worked 100% in FreeCAD or did you use any other software? Yes. Mm -hmm. No, this is 100% in FreeCAD. Okay. So this is actually pretty simple components. Um, yeah. These, all the structural elements like these are uh, arc structures. Mm -hmm. The advantage of the arc structure is that it's pretty simple. You just place one here and then you give its height, length and width. So it's pretty easy to, to to, to define a rectangular object, you can all the units are working. So you can just say instead of two meters, you can say like four feet, and it just works. Uh -huh. So that's basically how the those pieces were made. Uh, in recent versions of FreeCAD, we don't we now have materials. Mm -hmm. So. Um, each of these objects. Who programmed that in? Blocks. Who programmed Sorry. the materials in? At the moment, I just have a generic wood, a generic polycarbonate, and a generic aluminium. How this can be refined later later on. Who developed but, the materials? Was that your work? As far as yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. No, actually, we start together with other FreeCAD developers on materials uh, framework. To mm -hmm. be used uh, in World FreeCAD. At the moment, only the Arc module and the FEM module use it, but the idea is that in the future, any part of FreeCAD could link to materials and use those materials. Okay. The, the, the specification is pretty open and general, and so it cares for any area. Is that specification that you guys drew up, or is there any universal material specification from the rest of the world? Thing we did because you don't have any existing at the moment, so we just made a format which is open enough so you can mm -hmm. add stuff later. For example, uh, right now I use uh, architectural properties, uh, but the FEM guys use uh, resistance properties. But later on, you could imagine anything more that you could add, for example. Uh, I don't know, electronic properties, something You like can that. add thermal properties. Yes, yes. All, all, all of these can be added later. So I love that. Yeah. So that's definitely for any future developers wanting to join the project. Thermal calculations for housing within FreeCAD coming up. Okay. So at the moment what I did here is just align all the components, put some text to describe them, mm -hmm. and that's it. The, 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 these screws are pretty simple because we don't want much detail in this. Uh, and that's it. After that, once all those components are made, uh -huh. uh, they're just copied here into their final position. Just with, with, the, with using this clone tool, which creates, creates a basic linked copy of an object. So for example, this piece here, is a clone of this one. If I go here and change the length of this one, um, yeah, to so, like um, yeah, four feet. Tell me about this one. One practical application. If you have the library of parts in that same drawing, so you basically drew the parts. In one part of the drawing, in another, you you put the assembly, which is a nice way to go. Can you simply drag and drop and and basically pick from your parts 
to make the panel? And how do you do that? At the moment, at the moment no. But uh, let me just reload because I screwed something here. Mm -hmm. At the moment, no. But what I believe I will do, mm -hmm. uh, once I have this final part here, uh, probably I will just export it as a single file. Uh, and that that you can um, import in another file. Uh, at the moment, you can you have to do ma that manually. Like I could import this whole file in another file, but then all the objects, including the text and such, will come. And uh -huh. uh, we wouldn't want. I, I would want only this part. Right. So probably make an alter alternative version of this file with only that part here. Yeah. Right, but when you drew the the layout uh, on the left there of all the different parts, is that after you built the panel or that's before? You actually used those before. pieces? Before. I actually began with this uh -huh. section and then just copied around, for example, this would be copied here, mm -hmm. this panel would be copied here, but they are linked copy. I mean, if I change this, you will see if I change this, uh, where is it? Uh, is it? Um, to like, um, oops. you see, I just change its width to five feet, and yeah. all the rest. Of the object, all the rests are updated. Yes, and we have the transparency property for the glazing there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Unfortunately, when you have a um, compound object such as this one, at the moment uh, the whole object must have. You can define different transparency for the different pieces of it, but that should be done in the future. At the moment, you can only set transparency for the whole object so this is this is it what do you mean whole you whole object you mean the pane of glass can you explain that yeah, this is, here there are different objects yes this is one object this is another one mm -hmm. this other one and, and so and so forth yeah uh, this one this assembly this is a, a, what we call a compound and a compound is a single object which is made of several others, but uh -huh. uh, behaves as one single object. And at the moment, compounds can cannot have different uh, transparency levels, only one for the whole object. So that's why if I want to see the a bit of transparency here, I had to put transparency on the whole object. But I see. yeah, I that's see. just something that's not implemented yet in FreeCAD in the future. In other words, you're seeing the entire object as transparent there right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. But anyway, why not? This is not a big annoyance. Yeah, at some point someone has to code that, but yeah. at the moment nobody did it yet. So basically, yeah. this is the final object that will be used in the general assembly uh, okay. file. Yeah. How many hours did it take you to generate these? Actually, four hours. This entire piece of work here is four hours? Yes. That's pretty fast. Yeah, I believe I am pretty used to FreeCAD, of mm -hmm. course. Uh, I believe someone who is beginning with FreeCAD would take much longer, of course. Right. Uh, I believe this is the kind of uh, speed you should reach more or less easily after mm -hmm. you are a bit used to it. Yeah. Okay. Very nice. So what, what other details do you want to show me there? So you've got the assembly. Um, let's see. What I should do is I should probably take a look at my file. and Maybe you can walk me through how I access all these pieces just to navigate. So, I, so in this, you've got three elements. One is the parts breakdown. Two is the part, the 
labeled assembly and three is the yeah. assembly itself. So um, actually, um, the, the main thing is the tree on the left here. Okay. That's how all, all your, your file is organized. Uh, these groups here, you can just do that as you want. They are just groups or folders. Uh, you can just you click on some somewhere uh -huh. and you create a group. And uh, you can add groups inside groups as much as you want. Yep, that's, that's right. That's the way you organize your stuff. You yep. will hide everything that's not the first one. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Right here, I have my. Complex. Just pressing space bar. Yeah, right. space bar now, we would hide and show the group contents. When I opened up the document, I was I was shown the title block, the page with the title block. Uh, when I opened your file, uh, so that's this roof one. panel page. There's roof panel and start page. So close the. Yeah. So you, with the file that you have has two pages on it: roof panel page and roof panel one. Yes, uh, mm -hmm. the roof panel page. Uh, I was starting with it, but it's not. Uh, ready yet? You see that there are a couple of problems, like the small objects at the, the bottom, the sealing tape and the silicon silicon sealant are not projected correctly. Uh huh. And uh, yeah, there are a couple of still a couple of small bugs uh, regarding putting things on a 2D page. So yeah, th this actually will be a good opportunity for me to hunt. Hunt them down. So as you go along, you basically you, you use the software, and as you need something, you might just say, "Oh, okay, I gotta fix this piece," and then you yeah, exactly. you merge it. That's usually how it works. When I'm working with FreeCAD, I stumble on bugs, and I, if it's easy to fix, I just fix it. How do you keep track of that? You you have the version, and what do you do? Do you do you actually? How do you manage the repository for the main trunk versus? versus branches i mean so you're working in a what's officially known as a branch right or or not really i mean yeah are you working on the main trunk normally, yeah normally uh like to the right way is that every time you develop something in your software mm -hmm. you would create a separate branch and do your change there then upload to that branch mm -hmm. and ask for people to 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 test and then if it's if it's working okay you would merge the branch into the, the, the main code. Uh -huh. But uh, in FreeCAD, uh, since we have a long history uh, of being only the three of us, and we pretty much trust each other a lot, so uh, for those small things, we don't create a branch. Like, mm -hmm. for example, if I would fix a little bug here, I would directly commit in the master branch. Okay. Uh, if I'm beginning, beginning to develop something that could harm the rest of FreeCAD. For example, I'm developing a feature that would, for it to work, I would need to modify some parts of the core code. Then it would be dangerous to just yeah. put in, in the master code. And then I would do that in a branch, then wait until some people test and make sure okay. it works okay and it wouldn't screw other people's work. Then I would commit. Do you have those so protocols you... written down or that's just verbal? No, that's just verbal. It, there, is a, there are actually only three of us with with access to, to the master code. I mean, we yeah. write it. So, well, pretty soon there's going to be millions of developers. We're going to have to set that up. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> usually you see even big projects like Blender. Uh -huh. They have like um, I don't know. I believe less than fifty people with right access. Uh -huh. Probably more like twenty people with right access. Yeah. So, and they are all long time developers, so they, they trust each other very well. And so usually everybody knows what he's doing when yeah. when when you gain such responsibility. Right. And you know the a lot of the Blender people well too, or are you close to that community? A couple of them, yes. Mm hmm But recently I've been more busy with FreeCAD, so I've been lost um, close contact with Blender people. I still use Blender a lot, but um, I don't get much involved in development and so anymore. So. Yeah, 
you you used to be more on the development side there in Blender. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've never done more than just writing scripts, but um, I used to do a, to follow it pretty close and and discuss and, and that kind of stuff. But mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah, this it takes a lot of time and and stay tuned and stay close to it. Yeah, yeah, excellent. Um, so, what else do we want to show regarding this? Uh, this, do you want to well, so, some? At the moment, that's it. Uh, mm -hmm. This this medium part here is a kind of experiment. I think. Uh -huh. uh, let's say to try to do something um, didactical. You know, like, like an IKEA uh -huh. mount, mounting plan. And so I tried something that's a bit exploded like this uh -huh. that would show how, how thing works and I'm pretty happy about it. Actually. Yeah, yeah. It's it's pretty yeah. nice. I mean I think the exploded part diagram with the all the screws going in, that's yeah. it's pretty nice. And, and uh, if, if you if you can rotate around the, the model and so yeah. I think it works pretty well. Now, yeah. next step I would want to do is uh -huh. to put that on a 2D page so it can be printed. Uh -huh. uh, this I expect will give, will make a couple of other bugs appear. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I would need probably to fix some stuff. But the idea would be that you could have such a view, something like this, mm -hmm. on a 2D page. Yeah. Maybe you need to would need to explode more, like uh, put the, the panel above the, the wooden structure uh, a lot higher, so so you could see you can see better inside. I'm I'm not sure about uh -huh. this, but yeah, yeah, definitely. It's you know some some minor stylistic things could be done. Yeah, if it's a exploded part diagram, yeah, just uh, make it explode a little more, perhaps. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Anyway, I think for first try, it works already. So tell me how, when you do professional architecture work, you go the other way around. You start with 2D images and then you extrude them when you do your more complex? Um, this is a special case because um, you and me, we, we decide together to start from... Module-based design. Because you, because you already had uh, a history of components. And so, uh, when, when you design architecture from scratch, you 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 prefer to play with with um, undefined forms and uh -huh. not start from components. You would first design your general shape, then you would fit your component in those shapes. So um, normally you would probably want to use a more freeform way, such as Blender or SketchUp or something like that. Uh, here the, the exercise was the, the opposite, like start with very defined components and then the, the, the general form of the, of the greenhouse will come from those components. Um, yeah, in a construction set approach, yeah. 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 Okay. So yeah, that this is new for me. Uh, okay. I usually don't do like that, but it, it's interesting. It works actually quite well. Now, the interface to the next piece. Um, so the next step. Okay, so the next steps are to generate the two D images, and then the next step would be to say, okay, what's the interface now between two panels, or how much of yes, the that, that consideration uh, have you done? Step would be a wall panel and then see how is the interface between the, the wall panel and the roof panel. And uh, maybe the roof panel probably has to modify, to be modified a bit, I'm not sure. And then mm -hmm. another point is the, the interface between this side and um, the existing wall. Yeah, we have our list, our big list of interfaces. Uh -huh. um, let me pull that up here. So we could already have a big uh, general section of the wall building uh, with, the, with the existing wall, the roof panel, the side panel, and then we can do the foundation as well. And then we would have already like one full module that you can repeat how many times you need. And that would be already, I believe, a big step.
Yeah, Aquapana says June 1st. Another thing I can first. do as well, uh, I didn't do it yet, um, is the spreadsheet for that component with all the contents, which is basically that first part here. Oh yeah. But it could be, it could go to a spreadsheet as well. Uh, do you have a, convenient. do you have that built into FreeCAD already? Yes. Uh, which which feature? Now, which is that? There is a spreadsheet module. Oh wow! On the top, and then you can just click the first button to create a new spreadsheet. You double click the spreadsheet to edit it, to enter it, and can then you, you can there, you can work the same way as you work with a normal spreadsheet. Like you can write equal uh, like. 23, then you can write uh, 4 feet, then you can write uh, equal A2, same as a normal spreadsheet, but you can also, that's interesting, is access properties of objects. Like, for example, let's find the volume of this piece. Uh -huh. The name of this piece is roof panel structure. Uh -huh. So you simply go here and say equals structure dot shape oh, nice. dot volume of error. Why is that so? Structure shape volume of which of which item though? Of the entire thing? I don't know, it's a strange. It should give me the volume. How are you referencing it? What are what are you trying to get the volume of the piece of wood or the entire assembly? Yeah. Yes, just to, to show how it works, but I must be forgetting something. Mm -hmm. Or should I put the documents? Yeah. Maybe. Nope. Yeah. I'm forgetting something, but. Right. So you do you pretty much can you auto populate it by saying okay make the first column all the pieces that you used or something like that or you can pretty much yes. automate. Yes, you could use that for the price as well, uh, like uh, estimate the price of each each component and have some. Anyway, there are many many uses for that spreadsheet. Actually, at the moment, uh, it's just a generic spreadsheet like doesn't have much more purpose uh, but the idea in the future is to be able to use that as basically to collect yeah. data from your model in a, in a, in a spreadsheet form currently and can you just output all the parts into spreadsheet form or do you have to do yes. it manually um, there's a simple script for that no I actually at the moment yeah I would have to do it manually okay but um, because we don't have any automation tool yet in the, in the spreadsheet. Okay. But that, that's the plan, to be able yeah. to gather stuff automatically. Yeah. Okay, that sounds really good. Um, so next steps on this are to do the... Are you going to plan on doing the two-dimensional picture and then start looking at the the wall module and then the interface between them I mean you can yes. also start with interface between these roof panels too how do you put them together in detail but you can do just the um, basically next to each other part beyond that you can't do anything more but for yes, the next yes. to each other part I think the I think the answer has to be that we need to put in some kind of a foam material on one of the panels so that when you put the next one to it all the air gap is, is simply closed Think. Yeah, I believe one thing will 
need to be done is um, the same as you were doing the, the roof, the normal roof, I believe. Mm -hmm. That you first mount the wooden panel, then when the panels are in place, you place the, the roofing material on top of it. After all the panels are placed, um, I believe the same would have to happen here. You would first mount the wooden panel without the polycarbonate, and then um, come place the, the, the polycarbonate on top of everything. Because basically what he used would be a profile like those two guys here. Um, yeah. So you would first... This one I can actually be fixed I see what you're on, saying. On the, on the structure. Uh, but, uh, I mean, the next panel would come here, on this side. So basically, after all the wooden structure is there, you would have to put all the all the polycarbonate. I'm not sure it would be possible to do this actually, to like mount one panel and then like that fix it to the next one. Because this here, I'm not sure how it works. Probably. Or maybe you can, and you just wouldn't put this one. You just would finish, use this one as a finish after yeah, everything could be. is mounted. Yeah. This could work. Yeah, because the consideration is, for various reasons, including the, the concept of parallel build, you would like to get as much work done on the ground as possible. One, because it's yeah. easier, and two, you can parallel that more. There's more people mm -hmm. can fit on the ground then so as much the design requirement would be to do as much as possible so that design it that we can only do minor things up when we're up there but do most yeah. of it on the ground in a comfortable environment yeah certainly so yeah my, maybe that's doable but only the the only this part yeah will come after after the right that could be the, after the modern position That'll be one way to go about that, definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Because basically that's how this panel is uh, fixed in position. Those two profiles, the, the above one and the bottom one, mm -hmm. like uh, they press the, 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 yeah. the polycarbonate panel, and that's how it's fixed into place. That's right. Yeah, yeah. No, that's good. That's good. Okay. So do you have, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, basically that's it. Right, right. And let's see it. Um, can you put, can you readily put two panels against each other right now? I can try this. Because you're going to have that, that edge piece the trim piece. Yes. Uh, yeah, it pretty much overlaps like that. So the one panel overlaps a little bit to the left with the. Basically, what would happen? Yeah. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Oops. Yep. transparency yeah so this would be basically how it works did you align that is there a function that aligns it automatically like in SketchUp it snaps or did you just do that by hand no I did it by hand but of course I could snap it yeah just to be faster now I didn't care about mm -hmm. the size yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that's that's pretty much worked out, and, um, yeah. and so this this flashing part yeah. stays also inside. Yeah. This little guy here 
this little hole, I'm not sure how to solve it. But right. maybe this can extend a bit, no, actually. Yeah, just to extend it a little more and then cock yeah. it at the end. Yeah. yeah. And a bit of silicone where, where both meet and, and that's done actually. Yeah, that sounds good to me. Now, because of the thermal bridge between the, the two pieces of wood, do we care about putting insulation between the two adjacent panels between the wood? Or not really? Uh, here, you mean? No, below. Here you will have, you will have a screw here. Hmm? Right, but between the wood. Between the vertical 2 by 6s I don't think so. Right, because wood, it's... Wood itself is a good... Um, yeah, but the thing is, uh, are we leaving a, a point where we actually bind those together? Because if the wood is bent slightly, you're going to have little gaps. So it's important that you clamp those two together and then screw them together or something. Um, but because like, this is... Yeah. Maybe, I don't know how, how you guys you used to to do that, but then maybe you would have just... Let me draw something. Like some material here. Yeah. And then when when you screw those two panels together, they would press. Yeah. The material. Yeah. Something like that. Don't just with, with uh, mineral wool or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, something to that effect, possibly. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, this would be cool. The good thing is that it will all come pretty detailed already. Mm-hmm. And you're remembering that this would be a double double panel structure so we can hang things off the roof? So you drew the top yes, panel. Actually, yeah. <laughs> care about that. Um, At the moment, yeah. No. But would 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 it would you mean that this would be just doubled? Those those pieces? One on top of each other. Yeah, the bottom frame would be uh, an, uh, basically a hollow frame, hollow skeleton to give more structure. Because um, this is six inches. Yeah. You could simply go for a, a bigger profile. You can, but like it, you it doesn't scale for, for manual handleability. This is heavy enough that two people, or it's oh, for reasons of cost. Let's see. The reasons are one is the weight of the module, and I think there was also a a cost reason too. The the wood does not scale like that in terms of cost. It's more expensive to go with the double the size as well. Um, so there's those two reasons. Yeah. Because a double of the size will give you like 12 inches, that's mm -hmm. pretty high. Yeah. And it's like like uh, 16 feet, that's a bit above 4 meters. Yeah, but it does get a little... Because In terms what, what do you plan to, to, to hang from there? Like potted plants? Yeah, yeah, so for greenhouse applications that we enable the hanging of a top layer of growing from the roof so yeah. the probably the, the what it's going to be if it's if it's some kind of channels in hydroponics or aquaponics yeah. if it's a flow system ebb and flow system we would perhaps do like one don't load it down all at once by the control system of the hydronic the hydropon the aquaponics 
So if you have many channels of growing media up on the hanging from the roof, make sure that you load down only like one at a time with water because otherwise it might get super heavy or just basically design it so that yeah you can hang things off the top to get that third layer basically doing three-dimensional growing so you've got the roof layer you can have a bottom layer and you can have an intermediate layer so you're using the full three-dimensional shape of the greenhouse instead of just one layer mm -hmm. uh -huh. Uh, so yeah, so, you could, you could more or less easily calculate what was the weight of that, yeah. and therefore, um, if if those wooden pieces are, are enough to, to to carry that. But yeah, the doubling that seems seems much to me. Well, for sixteen foot spans, that's a, that's a long span. You have to be able to accommodate snow loads, remember? Yeah, that's true. Yeah, we've done some basic numbers on that. We should go through that again. Uh, but basically, some basic beam calculations, uh, whether you just pull it off tables or do first principle calculations, basic calculations. Yeah. Yeah, it needs to be calculated, actually. Okay. But yeah, I mean, it, we worked. It worked well with um, the double layer. The single layer, I can tell you, it's not. That's not going to do it. It gets a little, little weak. Okay. So that would basically mean, see if I'm correct, that this, this, and this. Duplicated, so it would yeah. be something like that, correct? Yeah, and you probably want to have the some of the cross members as well. Yeah. Yeah, you could have those. One, two, three. At the bottom, actually. Oh yeah, you have a quite a number of those cross members. Do you need that many? Let's see how. What's their spacing? Two feet. Their spacing is two feet. Oh no, that's feet. oh, that's about right. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I took from yours. Actually. Yeah. No, that's that's correct. That looked when you do it at the low angle, looks like they're really close. Uh, but no, it's just a long panel. Hey, uh, is that three feet? Because actually, oh, okay. Oh, one consideration. I think that these elements are actually going to have to be four feet. I th oh, what do you have? Three feet? Because if you talk about polycarbonate, I'm not sure we can get three three foot wide materials. I think we. Yes, you can go up to four. I think this this three feet I took from your panel. Actually, is it, would it be four? Yeah, the standard pieces come in four foot widths. They don't make them in three feet widths, actually. Okay. So that's actually different because. If you do the roofing material, that comes in three foot widths. Um, for the standard corrugated roofing, they don't make that in four foot. But for the glazing panel, they make it in four feet. Yeah. Um, which means that for the, the metal panels, I think you can get the raw steel, the, raw, the rolls of sheet steel. I think you can get that at four feet as well, though. Yeah. That, that shouldn't be a problem. Um, but yeah, that's okay. That's one thing. So, yeah, okay. which means that if it's four feet wide, yeah, you definitely uh, mm -hmm. need the double layer. It's pretty easy to adapt, actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Four feet. Oops. Crash. Oh, <laughs> we got a crash. Yeah, As I said, I begin to sense. I'm beginning to suspect that FreeCAD might have some bugs. Just kidding. Certain. That's a joke for the open source people who believe that software should not have bugs. <laughs> All software has bugs. It'll be yeah. what's important is the frequency at which they appear. Okay. Uh, um, 
Even commercial software has bugs in it. Yeah, except you can't fix them. Yeah, you can call someone, but... Like, would you ever call Microsoft? Like, hey, I've got a never, bug. Never fix it. Continue. No, you, you yeah. can't. It might be hard. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see. So maybe let's talk. Let's talk a little bit. So I think we're. That's really good. That's looking quite good and um, relatively speedy. So have you thought about the estimate for the, the all the other modules? I mean, it's. You know, mean similar amount of. Take? Yeah. How much? Yeah. I, be I believe most of the. I still have a bit to, to work on, mm -hmm. on this one. Um, so uh, I'm not sure how much would be the final um, the, the final estimate, but mm -hmm. I believe one or two hours and more, and, and this one would be done. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, okay. And then yes, I can definitely do one or two the next week. I mean this week. Mm -hmm. Your schedule, uh, are you doing other projects at this time or? Yes, I have quite a lot of stuff on the, on the table at the moment. Okay, okay. But it's, it's okay to, I think this week and the next one should would be okay to do a little, little bit of it. Okay, so let's see if we can come up with a, if you take a look at it, click on that document that I shared with you there. And let's take a look at what kind of a, what's a realistic plan for, for the timing because if so, I mean, I feel pre pretty confident, and we can pull some pull a decent workshop off. I mean, maybe let's wait till we talk next week. But I think we should really be considering putting on a, a workshop. So let's see. Let's look at the timing. What what are we? Okay. What are we considering for the timing right now? Um. Um, what were our... So work plan, timelines, yeah, so the page six has timeline in there. So let's take a look at that. Okay. So basically the working question is, can we do a workshop at end of July? So let's see, let's look at the calendar more specifically, what's it look like. So July, um, July 25th and 26th, we have the workshop on the Miracle Orchard. And um, yeah, so I mean, that, that weekend, August 1st, 31st of July, July and, and mm. through the 2nd, that would work for us, or it, another date that would work for us would be the 7th or the 8th of, let's see, no, July, yeah, August 7, 8. So 31, 1, basically the weekend, of the Saturday is the 1st or the 8th. Yeah, uh, that's so actually better for me. The latter date? I mean, it's better for me at the beginning of August than at the end of July, because mm -hmm. one week of July I will already be away. Mm -hmm. So, um, to... to Leave me a little bit of my month of August. It's better for me. Uh, my month of July, sorry. It would be best for me in August. But if it's, I mean, end of July would would work for me as well. Uh huh. August eighth would be around the eighth would be work better for you. Yeah. Yeah, yes. that's that's better. So Absolutely let's see. For me. It would work better for you. Yes. So the August 8-9 weekend works better for you? Yeah, that would be perfect for me. Okay, so until then we have uh, exactly two months. Yeah. So 
Yeah. Okay. That sounds good. So it's it's quite doable if. Um, yeah. Because the critical path for that would mean, I mean, if we look at the timeline for preparing everything, that means, let's see. Let me look at. Because um, if we're gonna have the actual build, that's. Uh, Let me just, uh, so are you looking at the page, page, um, six there? Let's, let's draw a little, little critical path. So, og eight, nine, we can, so I would propose right now, we say, um, August 6, 7 is the crash courses in CAD, and 8 and 9 is the build. Seems good. So, so August 6, 7, and 8 and 9. And we can actually make that into two options. You can either do both of those or just one or the other. Because some, some people might just not be interested in free CAD. And then there might be some free cat people that are not interested in the build. Um, so I think to to have option for one or the other, okay. that would work. But I think a lot of it would be great if we, you know, a lot of people from our community were to to come in to start learning the free cat, starting with myself. To start using as a pra very practical. I mean, we use that already, but we use that only pretty much for visualization. Basically, doing instructionals off existing CAD files by hiding and unhiding things. Um, but we want to start using it for more. Okay, so. So if that's the case, August 6, 7, I mean July 15 is the BOM and, and buying things, so week of July 7, July 7 would be the pretty much the instructionals. Well, I mean, instructionals can continue, but but we have a have a decent idea of the instructionals by about you know a month beforehand, so we can prepare. What is the instruction? Uh, basically, workflow workflow documents regarding parallel build. So basically, the documents that will allow us to take a crew of people of 24 people or more and make them productive during that entire event by working in parallel. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, so the main milestone would be the, so the announcement, the workshop announcement. We probably want to get it out there, like no later than July one. Um, I mean, probably like more like July. No, not. What am I saying? July, August. Yeah, maybe even more than that. July. If it's June 8 now, you think we can get a workshop announcement? I mean, I think this week and next week, continue on the design, see where we are and see how it's evolving. But probably like the third week, well, more like the fourth week, like the 22nd, so about two weeks from now, um, shoot for the announcement, probably like June 22nd. Yeah, maybe that's, that's better. Let's let's build some more modules and see how it goes and if the, the rhythm flows and, and um... mm -hmm. yeah so if we're gonna go June 22nd would be when would be a good time to get the announcement out mm. um, so basically until the so June 16 so by next week um, 
another module or two. And then the week of June 16, pretty much, until the 22nd, we would work that week to, to get the announcement out. So basically get all the information and the curriculum, um, which we'll have a good idea as we go forward with the, well, curriculum as far as the uh, one, the FreeCAD and Blender part. And at that time, if we were going to pull in anybody from a um, sweet home or anything like that, do you yeah. think do you think that would be a desirable outcome to to crash course both on on all those because they're I mean it's my, it might be, it's might certainly be cool and be something unseen before but um, you might might be I don't know get pretty much out of the scope because at the moment mm -hmm. you, yeah it would be hard to to make something out of this i mean you can uh, you can work stuff some stuff in, in sweet home 3d you can work other stuff in freecad but at the moment it will be pretty hard to make both uh, communicate so yeah this would be like a, i believe everybody would talk about that meeting because uh, there are not many there is nothing uh, running about architecture and open source so like gathering people who work with that would be would be impressive, yeah i mean it's not like well the way i look at it is that it doesn't hurt to put those people together it's definitely worthwhile and we're not saying that we're going to have all the answers it's basically that we're starting the process right so we get we get progress on osc using FreeCAD Blender, which actually we're working the Gasify right now in Blender. Dan, uh, Dan Hartman is doing that, so that's good. And yeah. just you know, just keep giving energy to those projects that that are open source, and continue yeah. building that energy. Yeah, it would certainly be interesting having talking with those guys. And I mean, see what what they do, what they would think of that, and if. They would have some interest in, in trying to work some stuff together and that kind of stuff. Yeah. Have you seen those uh, those videos on YouTube where people are importing stuff from FreeCAD into Sweet Home? No. Yeah. There's there's some there's some in, some of that going on. So, yeah. I mean, I found it actually quite interesting, and that's exactly what the kind of thing to be doing is to mash up these softwares because they're so open to mashing up right so yes that's a good thing i mean my vision would be that we can generate all the modules now so for example we're working in in, in freecad or blender between blender and freecad we can pretty much go back and forth right yes to do renderings um, yeah yes yes and no i mean yes on the geometrical point of view Mm -hmm. I mean, what you draw in one, you can import in the other and yeah. work with it without much problem. But uh, FreeCAD would add a couple of uh, non-geometrical non information on top of this. That you might, this begin, begins to become complicated to, to, to explore back and forth. But at the moment, I would say it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. like, what do you mean, what, what would FreeCAD do that non-geometrical things? For example, um, those dimensions I put on some of the materials yeah. uh, with all those properties that won't work in blend of the kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, right. So right. If you, imagine if you begin to rely on those materials to store stuff that you need, uh, you will lose it when you go to blend and that kind of stuff. Right, right. But, but that's, that's a matter of workflows. Like it's how, just a matter of adapting it, be, yeah. be uh, aware of those, those, those things. Yeah, because the, the, you know, the, the thing that I would like to see is, so Blender and FreeCAD are high power complex tools. Sweet Home is actually a popular platform. So what if we could design all the parts in FreeCAD Blender 
And then we have the readily exportable modules that you can use in Sweet Home to yes, design your houses easy. very readily. That would be easy because um, Sweet Home um, can easily import those file formats that both FreeCAD and Blender can export. Yeah. Uh, OBJ and uh, STL and that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, the problem is would be to get back after that uh, mm -hmm. what the person drew in Sweet Home mm -hmm. to be able to do something with that. Mm -hmm. I mean to re-import it back in, in FreeCAD. And mm -hmm. I had the first look at it and it's it, there is no easy easy way to do that. Okay. So how does that what are the opportunities and limitations there? So so the opportunity is that 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 individuals have no no skill and or no architecture skill, they can take yeah. already prepared architectural modules and make a meaningful house, something that can actually be built. Uh -huh. Right? That's exactly. extremely powerful. Now, if we can't yeah. go back into into FreeCAD, that's, you know, that's that's okay. We can take floor plans out of out of Sweet Home, right? Just basically conceptual. I mean, pretty much you have to go from the the Sweet Home to a someone who understands the modules will have to take them and say, okay, this is the build procedure now, right? Yeah. But it's still it could be a workable for simple structures with yeah, high, like... highly modular design. That that's doable, right? Yeah. It's doable and. Um... I don't know. I mean, the, the file format of Sweet Home is pretty simple. Maybe, maybe if 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 you discuss with those guys, they yeah. will tell you, man, ah, here's an easy solution. We can export like a list of the components and their positions, and then sure. with that list, uh, you could redo the wall, rebuild the, the thing in in FreeCAD easily. Sure, sure, absolutely. There might be like very easy solutions and shortcuts. Yeah, so that's uh, why we we want to talk to those guys. Do you know those guys? Yeah, well, we should make friends with them. It looks like a great project. Looks yeah. like it's just all good. I mean, we used it just for practical conceptual drawings, yeah. and it's very, I mean, very useful at that level. Yes. Useful and it's um, it's very easy for people who are not uh, used to construction. Yeah, and I mean you you can basically get to the point of conceptual renderings right there with popular participation. See, I I value that quite a bit, the fact that yeah. anybody can do it. Yeah, and actually, if it's your house that you're building, you should play with that. You should play with space and say no. Exactly. I would like a little bit more space in my my sitting room and then that kind of stuff and wait yourself because it's a little it's a play like mm -hmm. push that wall, that that wall a little bit to there and then ah this doesn't work and this all kind of um, adjustment is something yourself should do and not give that to an architect to the architect should make something upper level out of that but that kind of you know fine tuning of exactly how much space you want for each space basically how you want to organize your life could be something that you can do yourself sure it should be it should be and it can be yeah. yeah no question about that yeah i mean i think i mean i i personally think that the home applications the software around it the modular building techniques that we're doing, I think that's those are all killer apps. I mean, everyone needs a home. So, yeah, no question about it. Um, yeah. yeah, so let's let's do that. So, let's see. So if we talk about um, the, the potential schedule. Um, yeah, I mean, June 16. So, so that's next week. We, we talk next. Um, depending on how things go by next week, we talk about putting out an announcement, and and if things are on plan next week, that we think we can do it. Uh, the the absolute cutoff for for doing it, like we can potentially pull up, you know, go with the announcement 
more like July 1st or even July 7. I mean, that would be absolute latest because you, you need, you definitely need a month of lead time for that. Um, but if we got it out on, the announcement got out on June 27, 22nd, that would give us plenty of time, about six weeks to advertise. We could fill that workshop and uh, have a great time. So I think, yes. yeah. Yeah. And definitely, you know, let's start with the assumption that we're going to invite the free, the Sweet Home 3D people. I think they're in Germany, right? Those the developers are German or? No idea. I tried Whoever... to discover that on their website. But... Yeah, we can track that down. Uh, if anybody knows them, please uh, email us, if, whoever's watching yeah. this. Who is... But they're going to have users. I mean, that's a. I, it looks like there's a live community there. So even a user who's very familiar with the software could be a very good help to, the, to have at that workshop. So we can at least invite uh, users who can help us basically yeah. use it uh, in our tool chain. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, that's that's really exciting. So see. Uh, this guy is is the main developer. I'm looking the at the forum who is most online. This guy in France. France. Mm -hmm. One is yeah, one is French. That other one has two thousand posts. Yeah, that's the one. The main guy is obviously French. Okay. The two others Netherlands. Okay. You can email Jan, maybe yeah, he uh, knows them. European. They're French. There is a kind of um, firm behind Sweet Home 3D. Oh, yeah. But I don't know. It might be like the, the main developer has this software firm or something. Yeah. Yeah, it's a one guy firm. Mm -hmm. This is the guy. Send the link. Apparently, he's the master, the main developer of Switchdom 3D. Okay, excellent. Uh, let's email him. Um, I'll email him like right now. That sounds good. So so let's let's assume that. When do you want to talk next about this? Do you, do you have time checking at the end of the week or like on Friday or? Yes, we can. But let's let's do it Monday? next week. So okay. We'll have more to, more to, to to. Okay. So Monday next time next week, you want to do that? Perfect. Same time. Yeah. Let me put it on a calendar. Uh, Monday the 15th, uh, 2 p.m. Okay. Excellent. Excellent. Looks good. Looks like we're going to do it. It's going to be a good yeah. Good deal. Great. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay. And we'll be in touch. If you okay. get it, do you, hey, uh, would you mind posting, um, you know, we've got a bunch of different workshops planned already. Did you, have you seen those? Your, your other 
work you yeah. what do you mean you order uh, workshops yeah uh, we have a bunch of very exciting workshops check this out look at all these that are coming up including open source gis um open source orchard a forestry machines gasifiers um so if you wouldn't mind post it on your social media okay okay uh that side yeah. yeah i mean some nice stuff yeah i mean basically running the char the micro tractor on a gasifier that's going to be the first time we do that and that's that's excellent and we're working with another ted fellow shubendu on the open source a forest workshop basically we're interested in, in spawning open source uh, afforestation enterprises and also with uh -huh. the miracle work orchard that's about open source orchards that are polycultural open source nursery kind of topic so yeah really pushing the open source economics towards uh -huh. the concept of jeffersonian democracy as someone coined in a, in america a long time ago uh, yes. <laughs> well, anyway um so yeah if you wouldn't mind posting on your your media that would be great and other than okay. that I would. yep we'll talk to you next week thanks so much okay mm -hmm. okay okay Good take care bye-bye